welcome to the Assembly Line Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. Today, I want to show you how you can hook your Apple II computer up to an HDMI monitor or TV using the brand new VidHD. So, let's get started. The VidHD is a new expansion card from Blue Shift Inc. and it allows you to display HDMI video on your Apple II and this will work on the 2, 2 Plus, 2E or 2GS. John Brooks actually demoed this at Kansas Fest 2018 and he spent the past few months perfecting it and improving the startup speed. Let's take a look at how the board is actually put together. So essentially it's two single board computers put together into one card. So on the top here, we have a Orange Pi Zero Plus, which is a open source single board computer, and it can run various flavors of Android, Ubuntu, Debian, etc. It's got a quad core Cortex A7 chip that can run at about 1.3 gigahertz. The interesting thing from VidHD's point of view is that it comes with HDMI out. The other part of the card is a microcontroller. And this is the glue logic that takes the signals from the Apple II and translates them into something, presumably, that the Orange can understand. So how does the card actually work? What it's doing under the covers is it's continually reading the memory on the Apple II, and then from that, it's reconstructing what the video signal should be, and then converting that to HDMI out. And so you can do some really interesting things with this, like for example, on an Apple II or II Plus, you can actually display modes that wouldn't normally be available, like double high-res graphics. Because even though your Apple II might not even have that much memory in it, the card itself can sense when those memory addresses are being written to, and it can actually construct the appropriate signals. So it's acting as a sort of shadow video memory for the Apple II. So let's go ahead and we'll attach it to my 2E and then attach that to my television. Following the recommendations from the instruction sheet, I've gone ahead and put the VidHD card in slot 3. You can actually use slots 1 through 7 on the 2, 2 Plus, or 2E. On the 2GS uh, ROM 0 or 1, you have to use slot 3. And then a 2GS ROM 3, you can use slots 1 through 6. The first thing you want to do is turn the monitor on. And now let's go ahead and we'll turn the computer on. So you can see that it actually started up right away. So John has solved any of the problems that he had earlier where it was a slow boot up time. So you can see that the color looks really good on this 37 inch television and it looks very faithful to the original Apple II colors and it still retains some of the fringing. So it looks like the VidHD card is doing a faithful job at reconstructing the colors. Let's go ahead and we'll go into the control panel now and change some things. So to do that on the 2E, 2GS, you hit control six. On the two or two plus you hit control shift N. So if we hit control six, now we're in the configuration for the vidHD. So we can do things like we can switch to monochrome mode, and then that'll give us some options there, double high res for example. We can switch our video mode here to HDTV black and white, NTSC PAL, 2GS, and so if you're on a 2GS, you might actually want to switch to this mode just to give more faithful color reproduction. But for now, actually, let's compare with NTSC PAL. If we go back now, we can hit return and go back to the colors. And you can see now we actually have something that looks much more like the NTSC signal. So you can see there's color artifacts here and just a little bit more bleeding. And so this whole thing is actually being generated actually in software on that single board computer. But it's reproducing the actual artifacts from the original NTSC signal. So let's go back into the control panel again and we'll switch to other modes so we can switch the number of text columns between 40 and 80. We can say do we want to show the scan lines or not. So we can say light scan lines, medium, dark, 
or no. And you can see as I do that, it actually changes it. It might be a little hard to tell from the recording, uh, but it's definitely showing them. So we'll switch to no scan lines. We can also do things like change the language that everything is displayed in. And so that's the options there. And then we can also change the signal frequency in case we're in uh, Europe or some country with 50 hertz. Let's switch to text mode now and we'll see the different options for that. And we'll just fill the screen with some stuff just so we can see. And now we'll go into our configuration again and we'll just see what this looks like. So we can change the text colors so we can have all sorts of nice colors there. We can change the background of the screen in case you want some sort of Atari kind of look or something like that. And then we can even add a border around the screen in case we want to feel like we're on an Apple II GS. And then for the wide borders, you can see whether you want the borders to extend to the edge of the HDMI screen or not. So let's see what this looks like. If we keep this red border, we can change our background and then change the text color. So this actually looks really cool. Let's go back to the control panel again and we'll just go ahead and fix everything up. I can do that by just hitting the standards and that'll just reset everything back to the way it was. Let's go ahead and we'll try a double high res game. So this is Maniac Mansion from Lucasfilm Games. All right, so you can see with Maniac Mansion, the colors look really vibrant. They're all very detailed. There's no streaking or anything like that. We can actually switch to the different modes if we want. So for example, we could get out of HDTV and go with NTSC or PAL. And then you can see we do have the color artifacts. And so this is more authentic to the way the Apple II and IIe would normally look. But I actually kind of like it with the HDMI just because it does look a little bit more crisp. If you have a 2GS, you can go ahead and switch to 2GS mode. And then there's lots of other options for the text colors as well as everything else. So what are my overall impressions of the Vid HD? Well, I think it's kind of a game changer for the Apple II. It's great to be able to plug in HDMI and not have to worry about whether your television will be able to sync up with the composite. And the price, although it's a little expensive, it's uh, 135 I think it's well worth it if you consider how much you might end up spending on adapters and monitors that would work, etc. Uh, there were a couple quirks. So there was one time when I booted up a game and it didn't seem to be able to lock on to the HDMI signal. But once I turned the computer back off and on, then it synced back up. I think there's also some interesting room for expansion. So that HDMI card comes with a little antenna on the orange zero board and I'm kind of curious uh, whether something can be made of that Wi-Fi adapter that's actually on the card itself and then that card also accepts an SD card and so I'm wondering about uh, firmware upgrades in the future and whether the capabilities of the card might be able to be expanded so we'll have to just wait for more info from Blue Shift on that. I'll go ahead and I'll put ordering information in the show notes and just in full disclosure, I paid for the card myself. So final recommendation, if you've got a 2, 2 Plus, 2E, or a 2GS that you want to hook up to a 1080p monitor, I think the VidHD would probably meet all of your needs. So thanks for watching.